Ahoy there, YouTube! I'm back again today for another game review, another two games, one time review with Pelta Peeps, uh, the two-player version, and then the four-plus player version from Pelta Games. This is for two to six players. It'll take you between 10 and 80 minutes to play. Yes, you heard that correctly. And it's for eight all ages, all ages. And in Pelta Peeps, you are going to be trying to lay down your Pelta Peeps, which are these little tiny pieces, and then trying to flip over other pieces and connect your pieces uh, to your other pieces. But at the same time, even just having connections on your pieces is good. It is a light, simple, abstract game, but it's good. Let's open it up, and I'll tell you what I think. All right, then. We're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Pelta Peeps. So this is the four-player full game that I'm looking at, but it has enough components for six players, and the box says up to six players. So I think maybe they sent me the expansion, or... It always comes with the expansion i'm not quite sure to be brutally honest with you that this game is all over the board so in pelta peeps what you're going to be doing is you're going to be laying down your pieces and then trying to get your pieces to connect to each other so you're going to be able to gain points and also keep your pieces so that they are face up so that will give you more pieces more points at the end of the game i do want to mention right now i'm Strictly looking at just the uh, the four player to six player version of the game I will also show you what the difference is between the two player version of the game is at the end of this part of the video So first of all, we're gonna handy dandy rule sheet, which is thick construction paper uh, It's gonna have your score sheet right here, which you can make copy and paste I guess you can make copies of if you really want to uh, and, and it's relatively straightforward. It's a pretty simple game. The rules are decent enough I wish the scoring example would have been a little bit bigger because because uh, the scoring in the game is a little bit a little bit wonky. It's easy once you know what you're doing, but I wish this would have been a little bit more full-fledged. I wish they would have expanded this a little bit, but that's more of a minor nitpick. So in Pelt the Peeps, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be playing out your pieces one at a time. And on your turn, you're only going to do a couple things. So on your turn, what you're going to do is you are going to place one of your tiles out there, like so, and then you are going to either move or flip another person's tile. Obviously, there's nothing out here right now. Also, one weird uh, rule at the beginning, which I'm going to completely ignore right now as I do this, is for the first three rounds of play, only pieces with two or more interfaces, aka connections, are played. After that, any piece can be played. That would have been nice if they would have included a picture example here. Uh, but anywho, so now the next person is going to go, and so they might go like... Uh, this and so now they put their piece there they can either move or flip my piece the obvious choice is to flip my piece like so because that robs me of a point so next the yellow person is going to go why is that not sticking in there they normally stick in there very very well that's not a common problem uh, so next the yellow person is going to go and maybe they'll go right here and then they would flip this piece because hey that robs the purple person of a point good for them so next the blue person is going to go and they might let's see what piece do they want to play they might go like uh this and then they would flip this one over hooray and then the red person might go and they might do this which is not a wise decision at all but then they might do that why not so they do that and then they flip over this piece and as you can see this would be one of those cool moments where hey normally that would not work uh but in this particular instance because it's synced up and lined up it does work actually no it doesn't that's the wrong piece so yeah they might have planned on that and now they might be like oh no it doesn't work yeah that should work what am i what in the world ah there we go yeah so normally these fit in there nice and snugly apparently just not in this play example so next the purple person's going to go and they're gonna you know do this thing right here and uh bam then they would flip a piece or move a piece and at this point maybe they want to flip that piece right there uh, but what you also can do, and you'll see people will do, because there is definitely strategy doing it, so this yellow person is going to put this right here, which is great for them, because if you can ever connect to yourself, you're going to get bonus points for doing it. So how you're going to get points in this game is by having connections. So like, uh, for instance, this yellow piece is connected to red, connected to the yellow over here, connected to the blue, and connected to the red. So that one's going to score itself a good deal of points, also a bonus point for being connected to the yellow. So what the next player might want to do, the blue player, might now go up, uh, say, go right here. And since they know that this is going to be good points for that player, they might go ahead and bloop, do that instead. Because now that gives them an extra point because they're connected on their spot and it robs yellow of an extra bonus point. So essentially they just added a point to their score, but took away a point from the yellow score. Anywho, you are going to continue to do this until you get rid of 
all your pieces and uh, someone has used all their pieces, at which point you will you'll finish out the round to make sure everybody's had the same number of turns, and then you're going to score up the points. You will get points, you'll get two points for each one of your face-up pieces, one point for each one of your dragon's egg face-up pieces, which have these little riffles right here. You'll get points for connecting to different spots. So for instance, I get a point for this, and a point for this, and a point for this if I was yellow. You'll also get a bonus point for each time you connect to a color of yourself, which is really good as well. And you lose a point for each one of your pieces that you still have that you did not use. You tally up the points, whoever has the most points will be the winner of the game. Now, the two-player version of the game is slightly different. It's very much the same, except on your turn, you're going to have these little things called, I think they're called bones or arrows or something like that. And on your turn, you're going to start off by playing a big piece, and then you will play one of these little pieces, and it's pretty much the exact same game. And if you ever can't do play one of the big pieces, then you play the little piece first, and then you play the big piece. Uh, but still, scoring is about the same. But that, in a nutshell, is what you're going to get inside of Pelta Peeps and the Pelta Peeps two-player version of the game. Alright then, Pelta Peeps from Pelta Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go to the pros, let's go to the cons. We're just going to lump both these versions of the game together and do this review. So first, on the pro side, this, uh, you know, two to six players, that's a nice player count. Obviously, you do have to get the four-player version of the game with two extra ones. I'm not sure if you have to pay for those or how that works, but it does go two to six players, which is a nice player count. It's also easy to learn, easy to teach. It's simple enough that it can be a family weight game slash children's game. I played this with a six-year-old. He had no problem picking up the game. It is relatively easy to learn and easy to teach despite the fact the rule booklet could be a little bit better the rule booklet is serviceable also the biggest comment i have with this is that i feel like this is definitely a passion project this is just something that someone had in their brain and they wanted to get it out in the world and i think they 3d printed these now i could be wrong about that but if they did i think that is super admirable that they didn't care that you know maybe uh the, their kickstarter because i think they did have a kickstarter and it failed miserably if i'm thinking of the right game but they still came back and they made this game and i think they might have 3d printed it. it was originally supposed to be wood pieces and now it's plastic pieces honestly i don't really notice the difference uh which is a good thing i guess but i appreciate passion projects unfortunately moving on to the cons this is terrible. This is... Oh, God. I don't even know where to begin here. So first and foremost, there's a two-player version of the game. But you can play the four-player version of the game two players. So I don't exactly know why you need both of them. Uh, so let's start on the two-player version of the game. And I will say that the two-player version of the game, in my humble opinion, is worse than the four-player version of the game, but at the same time, I hate both of them probably equally. What am I talking about here? So the two-player version of the game is just boring. It is flat-out, straight boring. It just bored the living daylights out of the two different people I played it with, and both of them said, I don't ever want to play this again, and I unfortunately said, oh man, I do have to play this again in order to do the review. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. It's not interesting. I don't even think abstract gamers are going to think the two-player version of this game is interesting. And I'm talking about the specific 4-2 version of the game, which is another thing. The box is way too large for the two-player version of the game. Now, when you get the four and six-player version of the game, the box is, is a more decent size. But for the two-player version of the game, you're going to open it, and you're going to be immediately disappointed by what's in the box, because there's next to nothing in the box. And then you're going to be even more disappointed by the rule booklet, and then you're going to be even more disappointed by the game. So for dear Lord's sake, do not get the two-player version of this game. It is terrible. We're done with that part. Now, let's get to the four-player version of the game, which I hate equally, but for different reasons. 10 to 80 minutes? Are you kidding me? How, how, you see, that's, that's such a wide gambit. And there is no way you're turning out a 10-player. Okay, calm down, calm down. Okay, 10 minutes is realistic when you are playing the 10, two-player version of the game that I just punched. If you were playing this version of the game with the two-player rules that they recommend where you take two different colors, 10 minutes is out the window. But the biggest problem that I have with this version of the game, especially as you get to the higher player counts, is, oh my gosh, it takes forever, and it's boring, and those two things combined together are really bad. I don't mind games that are boring, 
Yeah, and, but they're they're good games, and they take you know, oh my gosh, just don't combine those two. Boring and taking forever should not be combined together. Boring in five minutes, I can get through that. That's not a terrible game. That's just not a great game. This this is my opinion is a terrible game. Now, yes, I did forget one prom pro, and this is probably the biggest pro that I have for this game is that there are some interesting aspects to this game where like you'll think that that your piece is safe and then someone will come around and they'll build around and then eventually you'll connect it and you'll be like haha now i can flip this piece around because i was able to connect this thing and that thing but it's not worth it i'm telling you it, it's not worth it it's not worth the time it's not worth the money i don't even know how much this is uh it's just oh gosh it's so bad it's so bad the rules should have been clear i wish they would have had a better example of the scoring in both versions of the rules the two-player version of the game is boring the four to six player version of the game is boring and it's so super long and and in the end i just absolutely there is I, I see zero redeeming qualities of pelta peeps for pelta games uh i hate to do this i hate to do this to a passion project because as i said i love passion projects i love when people are just like you know what my kickstarter failed but i'm just gonna self-publish this myself because i feel so strongly about this game but i really wish they would have felt less strongly about this game because then I would have not have subjected all the people that I did to playing this game because I probably, you know, I, I probably wasted about 10 to 15 people's time with this game. And especially, oh, the high player counts. So, in the end, Pelt the Peeps from Pelt the Games. I, I, I love this game. I cannot recommend this game, uh, what's the opposite of enough? Uh, at all at all I, I just can't i don't think if you're an abstract gamer i can't recommend this if you're looking at this as a two-player experience i can't recommend this if you're looking at this as a six-player abstract game i can't recommend this i just can't recommend this to anybody pelt the peeps for pelt the games i hate it i hate it i hate it and i hate it i hate it so much and um may god have mercy on its soul I need to take a shower. But uh, if you enjoyed this review, please sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know what has been your life's passion project. Have you had something in your life that you absolutely just had to do, that you had to achieve, that you had to accomplish for no particular indiscernible reason? For me personally, uh, you know, it definitely, this channel is now my passion project, but I also created the game myself, uh, which was great. I did a 500 print run of it, and then I never did any more, even though we probably should do another print run because people have asked for it. But yes. What has been your passion project? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.